Hi, everyone. It's always really great to be here at LIPS. Um, I'm really excited to be uh, here with you all tonight, at least Eastern time, uh, with uh, a face that most of you already recognize and another that's, that's maybe a little bit newer to most of you. Um, first, of course, is Martin Ratcliffe, who is our uh, sales development training specialist at ENS, and Jason Taylor, who is the product manager for Digistar, and basically the guy that gets to set our development timeline. Uh, and since both of them have come on in the last year, we have been able to, to kind of reassess what our philosophy is when it comes to things like education and live and interactive planetarium shows. Um, you know, Martin and I, of course, have lots of history in the planetarium field and having done countless live and interactive planetarium shows in our careers. Uh, and with the integration of the Cytome and Digistar software lines, we took this as an opportunity to really have some, some um, opportunity to, to, to change the way that we use Digistar and how we can bring that and make it a more powerful tool for live and interactive shows. So I'm gonna turn the rest of the time over to both uh, Jason and Martin as they show off Microcosmos. This is one of the new features in Digistar 7. It is, uh, for those of you who remember Powers of 10, this is Powers of 10 done live and interactively. So gentlemen, I'm gonna turn it over to you two and uh, take it away. Michael, thank you. And I'm really excited to be at my first LIPS conference. Um, a little sad that it's an e-conference, but really looking forward to not only participating today, but seeing you all in person next year. Um, and, and just to give you a little bit of background on Microcosmos, this is one of those features that we wanted to fully integrate into Digistar. Um, and what we mean by that is this, is, you know, you're going to see Martin present a control panel page that we have in Digistar to operate the power, uh, microcosmos for the powers of 10. However, it's fully integratable with an iPad. So you could be walking around and you can actually be controlling the microcosmos uh, show uh, right from your iPad. All of the models you're gonna see are integrated into the Digistar library so that you can actually use the individual models in other presentations. And so it's really important to us as we're integrating features to make sure that we're not just integrating them at one level, but that they were fully embedded in our system and give you ultimate flexibility and capability to use them in various types of shows and for various use purposes. And we have a lot of features this year. Um, since the beginning of the year, we put in over 20 features in the Digistar and all with that same concept of how do we fully integrate it to give you the flexibility to use and display them for your shows. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Martin. Okay, well, it's wonderful uh, to be here, everybody. And I'm <clears throat> sad, of course, that we're not in a, my old stumping ground of Pittsburgh and the Beale Planetarium. Sorry, Carissa, but hopefully we'll see you next year. Um, I was looking forward to coming out to the Berg again. Um, but we're just going to get going. Uh, I just have a few minutes to show you uh, some of the material. So this is the uh, Digistar interface, but I'm going to switch to my control panel and also my uh, dome view, which I can split out. And let's get rid of all of our lovely faces so that we can see uh, the cosmos here. So this is uh, one of many um, uh, let me hide that as well. There we go. So this is one of many uh, control pages. Uh, we have a pull down list of all sorts of things from science on a sphere to art, biology, chemistry, earth science, engineering, mathematics, physics, uh, you name it, it's in Digisar. And this particular one is something that uh, I've always wanted to do in the planetarium and never been able to, and that's the powers of 10, interactive, live, over 150 individual models here. And we have a relatively simple um, interface here where we can, we have the, um, the dome view where uh, the elevation is set for a uh, unidirectional theater. But if you were in uh, omnidirectional theater or for this demo, I'm just gonna place this in the middle of the dome uh, right overhead like that. 
But we can also change the azimuth so that it, it views from different vantage points in the theater. So that part is interactive. I can also, what I have here on the bottom uh, spring line is the power of 10. So we're at 10 to the power zero, which is one meter. We also have the one meter scale here. So you can uh, turn those on or off, uh, depending on the level of the audience that you're using. They may not like powers of 10 if they're just seven years old. Uh, but if you had a high school audience in there, you can use the power of 10. You can turn the scale label off. Uh, various things in here. You can set the transition time for flying between each power of 10. I'm going to keep it relatively short for this demo because it's a short demo. Uh, but you can extend this to quite a long time. But we're going to have uh, a really fun fly through. We're starting out with the largest um, flower on Earth. It's called Rafflesia. It's about three feet across. It has a very strong odor that gives it the nickname the corpse lily. Um, good job we don't have 4D uh, smellorama here, but that's the corpse lily. And we have the idea of powers of 10 is to scale things in both the micro universe down at the atomic level and also the macro universe out at the planet, stars, and galaxy level and relate those to other features that everyone knows here on our home planet Earth. So we have a beach ball, a basketball, and simply the instructor or the presenter or the live uh, interactive person in the dome uh, can uh, click on one of the powers of 10 and this will dynamically slew you in over seven seconds to the next level, which is um, about 10 centimeters across uh, that's this blue circle. And we have things like a matchstick and a coin, various other things. And um, by the way, these control panels can be transitioned to an iPad, something where you can interactively walk around the dome. Uh, that's the idea behind the control panels that you're able to interact directly with the audience. You could even hand this to the audience and have them press one of the buttons and then transition down to a lower level. So here at 10 to the minus two, about a centimeter, we've got ladybirds, uh, we've got other uh, various creatures. We'll go down to 10 to the minus three where we see a paramecium, um, which is the eukaryotic cell, of course, and the amoeba, the shape-shifting cell. So now we're getting down into some of the uh, smaller microbial areas. There's also an LCD panel here, which is used, of course, in uh, cameras and uh, TV systems, things like that. So we're relating to things that we already know at a uh, human scale. There's a human egg uh, going on through our 150 models. Uh, we have a um, skin cell, a white blood cell, a red blood cell, and down to 10 to the minus six, we continue into the inner sanctum of uh, scale and uh, human biology and also down into mini physics. We've got a virus there. We're not gonna touch that one. Um, we've heard enough about those. And we're down, getting down to the red wavelength scale. And here at 10 to the minus seven, we are entering the realm of the scale of DNA, the familiar uh, double helix carrying the genetic instructions of life. And further deep into this, uh, we can go down to the chromosomes, continuing onwards. And I'm gonna do this fairly rapidly because uh, I think uh, most of you know a lot of this, but just showing the interactivity of this system. There's a cesium atom. Um, cesium atoms are a product of uh, uranium-235 fish and it has a half-life of about 30 years. Uh, and most importantly, it's actually used to date wine. I did not know that until I did a bit of research for these presentations. So uh, all of you will relate to that in some way or another, I'm sure. There's a water molecule. Now we're diving into the atomic scale as we go down to uh, even smaller wavelengths, uh, the gamma ray wavelength. And then we come into an inner realm uh, where there's very little going on until uh, we dive into the uh, nucleus uh, of atoms. So here we have the uranium nucleus that we spoke about a moment ago. And uh, the nice thing here is that you can stop uh, if you wanted to jump to another point. Uh, you could jump backwards if there was a question in your audience. 
and you can uh, just continue going as well. We're at 10 to the minus 16 now with passing the scale of a proton, an individual proton. And now we're diving into the inner parts of the universe. So this is the realm in which we learn about uh, neutrinos and uh, we dive down into the level of quarks, which are only analyzed in uh, the world of particle accelerators. So uh, this hopefully will give you a, you know, kind of a zoom scale of where we're going in the universe <clears throat> as we look down to the tiniest scales. And of course, if you're talking about cosmology and the, the origin of the universe, we're getting down to the scales where the universe was extremely tiny and very hot and very dense, uh, kind of a quark soup. And we have to jump another 10 to the 15 levels uh, to dive down to the Planck scale. So there's very little uh, beyond which uh, we can measure once we get to the Planck scale. That's another 10 to the power 15 levels. And beyond this, we really don't know what happened uh, in the very early universe at the first few microseconds after the Big Bang. But we can transition back to the higher levels. And I'm gonna make this a little bit longer just to show you, we'll take 20 seconds to fly back. Uh, to 10 to the power zero, which is uh, a meter across. And this looks spectacular on the dome. Remember 150 models moving in real time on a laptop over the internet on Zoom being shared with you in full color. Uh, that's a pretty amazing uh, system. Uh, of course, I have a rather nice graphics card on my laptop uh, that enables that to happen very smoothly. And if you have a full dome system, of course, uh, yours can. Uh, interact even more. In fact, you could build some of your own models and include them in this fly through. So let's transition to some of the larger scales. And there's Sophia in the background making herself present just as I bring up the scale of animals. Uh, Sophia is a bit smaller than any of these. Uh, we've got the <laughs> elephant and giraffe. This is a live show, folks. <laughs> Isn't that great? I love it. So, um, She's been quiet all day and then introduced herself to uh, the, uh, the LIPS crew, which I love. So um, here we're getting out to the kind of city scale. We're up at uh, 1,000 meters now, uh, 10 kilometers. I'm going to do this fairly briskly. We'll go to 10 to the power 5 and 6 and just show you how quickly this can move. Now we're out to mountain scale. We're moving out to the size of states or countries, and then out to 10 to the power seven, which we all know is about the diameter of the earth roughly. And as we continue outwards, uh, we see whole uh, countries. We even see some of the smaller objects in the universe in the solar system, uh, the moon, uh, different moons, uh, even the planet Mars is in this scale. But as we go out to another uh, power of 10, we start seeing the larger planets, Uranus and Neptune, uh, even out to Saturn and Jupiter and the scale of the sun. So we're at 10 gigameters now. And as we continue upwards to 10 to the power 12, 100 gigameters, we have some of the supergiant stars, uh, the stars that are on the upper end of the main sequence or uh, are uh, red giants. And I'm gonna skip along even faster here uh, to some of the largest red giants known, Antares. And as we exit the stellar world, we come across the diameter of our solar system. We cross a light day, and now we start measuring distances in terms of light years, the amount of time it takes light to travel um, a light year. So we're out beyond a petameter. These are the scales of stars that go boom, uh, novae, planetary nebulae, And then out to the Oort cloud and the scale of other uh, gas clouds into stellar molecular clouds that form stars like the Orion Nebula, uh, the results of cataclysms like the Crab Nebula. And onwards and outwards, we get to, um, to the scale of our small dwarf galaxies that orbit their own Milky Way. This is a small Magellanic cloud. And then um, even larger scale, we transition to things like our Milky Way. I need to speed up the transition because that's taking too long. 
So here's our Milky Way galaxy about 100,000 light years across. And of course, then there's a huge gap until we start reaching the realm of superclusters of galaxies, things like the uh, local group and then the Virgo supercluster, which is about 60 million light years away, one of the uh, key points in our local area of the universe. And um, Virgo, of course, has a significant effect on our motion throughout uh, the local supercluster, which is called Laniakea. We got about one Doesn't more it? minute, Martin. Sorry to interrupt. Perfect. Thank you for <laughs> letting me know because I was hoping I get that alert. So uh, the Hubble Deep Field uh, takes us out to 10 uh, billion light years. If we go on uh, beyond that, we start seeing the expanse of the known universe. Uh, this is the realm that the James Webb Space Telescope uh, is going to roam. And then in about 15 seconds, I'm going to bring you back home and let you enjoy uh, some of that uh, transition as we, I forgot to start my music up again. <laughs> There's always something in a demo, right? So here we are back uh, live at home. So that's an idea of um, the Microcosmos interactive control page with Digistar, uh, brought to you by Evans and Sutherland, of course, and I will hand it back to Michael and thanks everybody for uh, being willing to watch that. Thank you.